have a call out for this air conditioner here not working, this old email air package unit. Um, if it looks familiar, that's because it is. Uh, I was out here two, three weeks ago replacing a fan motor on this one, so it's always a bit nerve wracking when you're out this soon. Um, but we'll jump in and see what we find. First things first. That's good. So this particular one is actually hooked up to our, uh, a BMS system here on site. Um, says that it's calling for heat. Um, it actually does the space below in conjunction with that one over there. Um, however, compressor is stone cold. This thing hasn't been running for a while. So we'll, uh, we'll jump into that. So looking at this board down here, I've just noticed it's flashing. So CUP solid, system one slow flash and system two off. I come down here, so um, up there it says CUP, system one, system two. So CUP is on, slow flash off, high pressure. So currently this thing's trying to run in heating, but yesterday when the call came in, it was actually quite warm. So I'm imagining this thing was actually running and cooling yesterday. So my first point of call now is to test that, uh, well, what would have been the condenser fan yesterday. So let's do that. Check if it's seized. No. So according to this diagram here, that's our that's our um, well condenser fan motor, outside fan motor uh, has a 10 uf capacitor, which is I've traced it back just in there. So we'll test that. Capacitor's fine. All right. Well, I'm at a point. I'm going to turn it back on now and see what happens. So I'm now just testing across the switch, the higher pressure switch, uh, and these are the readings I'm getting. So. There's definitely something going on with that switch. However, switches don't just fail. Um, so there's probably gonna be another reason. Uh, so when, when I cycle power on, um, it basically just falls down straight away. It doesn't even try to try to start. Um, but for reference, if I go like that and see if I can do this with one hand again. No, it doesn't want to do it. Hold on. Ah, get in there, oh, you bastards. So for reference, that's uh, that's our resistance across our low pressure switch. So yeah, we'll keep looking into it. So I've got a temporary bypass on the, the high pressure switch. And I've got my Testo Smart Probe there so I can read what the high pressure is when I get this thing running. So the unit's just kicked on now. Um, I'm gonna let it settle for a second, but I just wanted to check the uh, Condenser fan motor amps, it's allowed to run three, so it's it's not over amping, so I think the fan motor's fine. I've got my probes on, but currently it's running and heating. Um, so to replicate what happened yesterday, I'm gonna flick it over to cooling and then we'll, uh, we'll see what they look like. <laughs> so I've just flicked it over to, uh, uh, there you go. Hey! <laughs> so this thing's been running for about five minutes now. Got a 24 degree condensing temp and yeah to be honest it's 15.3 out at the moment uh, it's, it's pretty good um, we'll keep monitoring see what happens so this thing's been running for about 15 20 minutes now and uh i'll put a photo up but my, my pressures are looking pretty good so i mean you'll you'll notice that obviously i'm running a uh a negative suction pressure which on an aircon you don't need and usually it's not uh <laughs> not recommended but I mean I'm running this thing outside it's outside its envelope anyway so you know it's a it's 16 degrees down in the space they're not going to be requiring cooling it's usually going to be running and heating at this point so you know take that you know with a bit of grain of salt uh, but my but my um, my uh, condensing temp's pretty good 15k diff you can see over here it's 15 or 16 degrees outside so currently I'm actually pretty happy with how this thing's running um, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep monitoring. At the moment, I'm leaning towards it just being that, that faulty switch, but you know, usually they don't fail by themselves, but again, this thing's pretty old. It's, it's running on R22, so yeah, we'll keep monitoring and see how we go. So I ended up turning it over to heating again, just to confirm. And I'll, again, I'll put a photo up of my pressures, but they're, yeah, they're, they're really good. So uh, I'm not too concerned about that. We'll just go ahead and, we'll go ahead and try and source one of those switches and come back and replace that. Last thing before I go. Yep, still good. Here to replace that pressure control. Um, now, because this unit is so old and we basically just want to get it back up and running with a HP in the system, uh, with a high pressure switch in the system. Now, I, I tried looking up to see whether or not these had Schroeder cores in here and I couldn't find any information. And as I loosen it, it doesn't seem to be slowing down. So I'm going to assume that there is a pressure control in there. So 
the next best solution as opposed to recovering all the refrigerant and then going down that path. It's so basically, we've got another port here, but this is where these particular fittings come in very handy. So this is a little T-fitting. I've, I've put a Schroeder core in there. They don't usually come with a Schroeder core there. Uh, just so if this ever does fail again, which it shouldn't in its lifetime, but if it does, we can easily replace it. But yeah, these, these um, little T-access fittings here, very handy for stuff like this. So at least that way we've got one port for our new pressure control and we've got a port for gauge access as well. So we're not losing that from the system. Um, I think I picked these up from Actrol, I'm pretty sure, or Kirby, one of the two, but yeah, super handy. So got the uh, T fitting on now and the new HP control all wired in. It's a, it's a bit of a mess over there, but yeah, now just to make sure it works. Um, again, I'll uh, always just kind of leave a note behind saying that you know I've replaced a particular part and also in this instance, Schrader in T fitting. <laughs> Just to make it easier for me if I inevitably forget, when I inevitably forget. Beautiful, unit's now up and running. Been running for about five minutes now. Um, last thing I want to do before I uh, pack up and continue on my day is just get my lead detector out and just hit that just to make sure I've tightened those up enough. Um, yeah. It's got my uh, field piece lead detector here. I really, really like this thing. But yeah. With this particular one, you are you got to keep it's the IR infrared one, so you got to keep moving it. Otherwise, it'll acclimatize to whatever you are. So usually, I'll kind of just every now and then just draw it out, give it a chance to breathe the fresh air. Looking all good here. Sweet, we're all done.